Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, May 27, 2018. We are still in Unit 3, and from the Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is Give Praise to God. Give Praise to God. Our devotional reading is Psalm, I'm sorry, Hebrews 7, chapter 7, verses 20 to 28, background scripture, Leviticus chapter 16, Psalms 34, and Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 to 18. Our printed passage, or lesson text, is taken from Psalms 34, verse 1 to 10, and Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. From the Adult Quarterly, lesson aims or to, number one, identify the mercy and faithfulness of God when experiencing fear and brokenness. Number two, appreciate the psalmist's invitation to taste and see the faithfulness of God. And number three, pray for God's will for restoration in and for all people to be realized. The adult uh, quarterly lesson has three major divisions after the introduction. The first is a personal, it's entitled, I should say, a personal resolve to praise God. And that's covered between Psalms 34 verses 1 and 7. The second is an invitation to praise God. That's an invitation to others to praise God, and that's covered between Psalm 34, verses 8 to 10. And the third division is God's goodness manifested, and that's covered between Hebrews 2, 17, and 18. From the standard commentary, the lesson title is Rejoicing in Restoration. Rejoicing in Restoration. Uh, devotional reading, background scriptures are the same, and the lesson text is the same. The aims from the standard commentary, or number one, describe the connection between Psalm 34 and Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Number two, give examples of God's desire and ability to provide for his people. That is for us to give our personal examples. And then number three, encourage one person in the week ahead who feels as though God doesn't care about his or her suffering. Sometimes when we endure suffering for prolonged periods, um, we may think the enemy may cause us to doubt that God is really concerned, that God is there with us. But hopefully uh, our lesson text will encourage us that that is absolutely not the case. Will help us understand, I should say, that is absolutely not the case. Uh, there are three major divisions in the standard as well. Uh, the first is entitled Call to Praise. Call to Praise, and that's covered between verses 1 and 3 of Psalm 34. The second is caring God, caring God. That's covered between Psalms 34, 4, and 10. And then the third is compassionate Savior, compassionate Savior, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's covered between uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. So let's get right into our lesson text. Um, I would like to read the lesson text, and then we'll... Uh, and give a little background, and uh, then we'll get into our verse-by-verse -verse discussion. So from Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. 
This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation of the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor, that is, to help them that are tempted. And our key verse is uh, verse 8 of Psalm 34. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. This happens to be one of my favorite psalms, Psalms 34. Psalms 103 is another. I have many favorite psalms. <laughs> But uh, this really blesses me uh, every time I read it. Uh, now, j just before I discuss the background, concerning the, uh, the background scripture, uh, we were assigned Leviticus 16. And if you read that, uh, you know that that describes in detail the duties of the high priest. Uh, and that's for our reference. Uh, and we know that Hebrews tells us that the high priest had no continuing ministry because their ministries were interrupted by death. But Jesus had a, a continuing and everlasting ministry, and he made one perfect sacrifice, not one every year on the Day of Atonement, which is described in, he, in Leviticus 16. But he made one sacrifice for all, and that had... Uh, eternal value, uh, and then uh, Psalm 34. Psalm 34 is, and actually, I'm sorry, let me back up. Hebrews uh, 2, 5 to 15 uh, talks about the high priestly role that the Lord Jesus uh, plays, or, ha or is rather, uh, uh, has assumed. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Psalm 34, which is where most of our lesson text is taken from. Uh, is a psalm written by David. Most of your Bibles will have a uh, a caption ahead of that psalm that says it is a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. Uh, psalm 34, again recorded, uh, written, if you will, by David after he this incident with. Abimelech. Abimelech, by the way, was a title like Pharaoh. Uh, it was not uh, his actual name. Um, his name was, uh, he was the king of Gath, and uh, I'll, I'll, he, he had another personal name. Uh, but S S David was on the run from Saul. Uh, Saul, of course, uh, attempted to kill David on several occasions, and David uh, ran into the land of the Philistines to Gath and uh, was uh, taken before the king. And, of course, they realized that this was a David that had killed uh, ten thousands of Philistines, of course, as the young maidens used to sing. Uh, and David was afraid. Uh, that uh, uh, if, you, if you read uh, Samuel... Uh, I believe it was uh, 1 Samuel 21, uh, verses 10 to 15. It'll give you that account of David. And David was afraid. but And David perhaps thought uh, uh, at one point that his cleverness in uh, letting the drool run down his beard and, 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 and beating on this uh, door and, and, and acting insane uh, was the the reason that the king let him go. But after a probably very brief reflection, he realized that it wasn't what he did. It wasn't his cleverness. It was God that delivered him. And so this psalm really was inspired, I'm sure, by his gratefulness to God, not only from delivering him from 
uh, Abimelech, but also from Saul time after time. So we're going to get into our lesson text with that understanding. And, and you know, um, uh, just thinking about uh, the occasions on which we, we praise God most sincerely, uh, it, it's it's easy for us to praise God uh, when he's blessing us abundantly. And obviously we can see those blessings. But this is a this is a time when David praised God, when he was in despair, when he was in distress, when he was on the run. And at those times when we are in despair and distress and when we're um, uh, when we're uh, experiencing trials in our lives or times that we are to praise God as well, recognizing that God is with us and God will deliver us in his good timing. So we want to keep that in mind as we go through the lesson text today. All right, so beginning at verse 1, verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, this is a uh, uh, a an ancient Hebrew uh, manner of writing, uh, which uh, it's, a, it's a poetic style of writing which uses parallelisms. Uh, where the author says uh, something uh, one way and then says the same thing a slightly different way. So here he says, I will bless, and bless here means praise. I will praise the Lord. Lord spelled all caps. Uh, that's uh, the eternal self-existent one, uh, Jehovah. And it says, at all times. And then it says again, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So blessed means praise, and of course praise means praise. And it says all times and then continually. So those are couplets, if you will, uh, parallelisms. So he's saying his praise, he's going to praise the Lord continuously. What does that mean? I mean, does it mean that he's always walking around 24-7 praising the Lord? No, it doesn't mean that. But it means he is always in an attitude of prayer whether he is in experiencing good times or whether he's in times of distress or hardship or despair uh, he is always in an attitude of prayer and praise uh, erupts spontaneously when you're always in an attitude of prayer when you can see the goodness of God when you can see God's deliverance here and there uh, and uh, so we want to as well, always be in an attitude of prayer, not just in good times, an attitude of praise, I should say, not just in good times, but even in the worst times, we want to be in an attitude of prayer. Verse 2 reads, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What's he saying here? His soul, his soul being his essence, his innermost being, so make her boast. Uh, he's not going to boast in anything that he has done. He's not going to take pride in anything that he has done. Again, I mentioned uh, he. we might have thought if we had been confronted with the situation that David was uh, in uh, before the king, King Abimelech, uh, that maybe our cleverness uh, was the reason we escaped that situation. Or we may think that our cleverness... Uh, is responsible for us achieving or avoiding any conflict or distress. But we, we need to realize that uh, it, it is always God. Um, God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And it is God that gives us um, whatever wisdom, whatever knowledge, whatever the good uh, thing uh, that we do, what, whatever good things that we do are inspired by him. Uh, now, he says... So he is going to make his boast in the Lord. He's going to give the Lord credit. Uh, he said, the, and then he says, the humble, uh, and that word is a plural, it's speaking of plural, humble people, and, and it's another, uh, and elsewhere it's translated, poor, shall hear thereof and be glad. Uh, they will hear of his testimony of the Lord's goodness, he will give glory to God uh, and be glad. They will know that God delivers. God delivers him and delivered him. He's giving a personal testimony to others, and others will be glad because of that. I used to 
recall my mom always saying whenever uh, anyone praised her for anything when she retired and when she reached the 75 and we had a birthday big birthday dinner birthday dinner for and retirement dinner she would always say to God be the glory and to God be the glory for whatever she had accomplished in life whatever milestone uh, and and of course that made us all glad that uh, uh, she was that type of humble person verse 3 says oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together what do we mean when we say, oh, what, what does uh, David mean when he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together? Uh, this is a kind of parallelism, a little different, though. When we think of magnify, we think of enlarging something, uh, making it greater. And the, uh, the word blessed here, it says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Blessed is a is a uh, it's a state of of satisfaction or contentment. It doesn't necessarily mean material blessings, but it's a, it's a a state of happiness, a state of and, and happiness is not even the best term because happiness is transient. But it's a state of satisfaction and contentment and and even joy that's undergirded by uh, this trust in, in the Lord's provision of everything that we stand in need of. Uh, we see that in Psalm 1-1. Uh, so, uh, blessed is the man, and, 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 uh, and that's, a, that's a, one of my favorite psalms as well. Uh, let's go on to verse, uh, verse 9. Verse 9 says now, and he's again, David is reaching out to others. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, those sanctified, set apart for God's purposes. For there is no want to them that fear him. Again, oh, fear the Lord. That is to have reverence, deep reverence for the Lord. This is not a fear as in dread, unless, of course, you do something contrary to God's will. And then you are to fear a chastisement, even his saints. He says, for there is no want to them that fear him. Uh, Proverbs 9, 10 teaches us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And fearing God includes believing that what God says is true is true. And what he uh, says uh, that we are to do, we are to do. What he says we are not to do, we are not to do. That is all a part of fearing God giving him reverence, giving him the utmost respect, and, of course, obedience, obedience. Uh, and we are, for those who are walking contrary to God's will, we are to, they are, I should say, to fear the Lord's judgment. Uh, they, Matthew ten twenty eight says, uh, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Uh, you know, uh, much is said uh, about uh, preachers not preaching hellfire and brimstone anymore as they used to. Uh, but there is, uh, and, and many will not preach uh, hell at all about judgment for sin or even sin for that matter in some of the more liberal churches. But there is a judgment. It's the point that the man wants to die and after the judgment. And we know there is a, an eternal uh, separation from God uh, in hell that is uh, mentioned many times in the Bible, in the New Testament, and by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there is to be a fear uh, of God and his judgment if you don't know him, if you don't accept what he's done through the Lord Jesus Christ in his uh, salvific work. Verse 10 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. The lion, uh, undisputably, uh, the king of the jungle, of all beasts. Uh, the lion is, uh, was created uh, to certainly uh, 
provide for uh, itself uh, and certainly uh, the keen hunter and, and so forth. But there are times even when young lions, strong lions, uh, do go uh, hungry <clears throat> and they lack. Uh, but David is saying those who seek the Lord. And again, the reference uh, I made earlier to Jeremiah 29 uh, we should keep in mind, seek the Lord with us, Jeremiah 29, 13, seek the Lord with all of our hearts. Uh, when we seek the Lord, he says, we will suffer, uh, sorry, we shall not want any good thing. Uh, from the, uh, from the NIV, uh, it reads, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Anything that the Lord, and a good thing, I think we can define as the the things, the best things that God wants for us, not those things necessarily that we want for ourselves and that we deem to be good. We may say, well, I would like a Rolls Royce. That would be a good thing for me, but the Lord <laughs> will provide those good things <clears throat> that he deems good for us and for those who trust in him, who seek him and who trust in him. And now we're going to move to uh, the third division in both commentaries. Uh, we're going to move over to Hebrews chapter 2 from the adult quarterly. The third division is entitled again, God's goodness manifested. Manifested means to be made clearly visible. And from the Standard, the third division is entitled Compassionate Savior. Compassionate Savior. Verse 17. So we're going to read verse 2, chapter 2, rather, verse 17 and 18. Verse 17. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for sins of the people. Let's read that from the NIV for a little uh, more clarity. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might Make atonement for the sins of people. What is that saying? <clears throat> it's a verse saying. It's saying that basically Jesus had to be made like us so that he could experience our weakness. He could experience our suffering. He could experience our oppression uh, and our pain. Uh, and so he was made human. He was made flesh. Uh, God, of course, created us and created uh, and, and knows certainly about every circumstance that we will encounter in life. He certainly created pain and uh, so that we could experience that and emotions that so we could experience uh, depression and so forth. So he he knows uh, what he created, but to have experienced it personally by becoming weak and becoming oppressed and becoming uh, a, a, a poor servant. Uh, was something that he had to do so that he could uh, have firsthand experience uh, in as a, uh, a mediator between God and man. What does a priest do? A priest represents God to man and man to God. A priest is one that goes in between. So in all points, uh, he was tempted as we are yet without sin. So he, know, he knows the temptations that we endure. But of course, uh, he had no sin nature, so he was able to endure the temptation without sin. So the fact that he vicariously, or he actually not vicariously, but he actually experienced the same things that we experience, it made him again a more faithful high priest, a better representative of man to God. And, of course, he was God incarnate, so he represented God in flesh to man, okay? Now, when it says, so he was made a, a faithful high priest in all things pertaining to God, we go back to Leviticus chapter 16 where we read 
about the duties of the high priest. And one of the central duties was to take that sacrifice, uh, to take the sacrifices behind the veil to the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement. Uh, the priest, however, had to make first make a sacrifice of a bull for himself and his household. Then he made a sacrifice for the people. What, remember, there were two goats. One was sacrificed. Blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat. The other goat was a scapegoat. The other goat was allowed to was taken into the wilderness and escaped. And the the sin, uh, the other goat that was sacrificed for the sins of the people was sacrificed, uh, was a representative of Christ. The one that was released was a representative of those who the other goat had died for. We are the scapegoat. So he's saying here to make, so in all things pertaining to uh, the high priest, and it says faithful high priest, rather, in all things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of men. What does reconciliation mean? It means to make right again, uh, to to uh, to actually remove any discord or to straighten the relationship, and that is what the Lord Jesus did for us. He has made it possible for us to be brought back into a right relationship with God. Uh, God is never reconciled to us or anyone. We are always reconciled to him or made right with him, and not because of any righteousness of our own, but we're clothed with the righteousness of Christ, which has given us this right relationship with God. Christ, The righteousness of Christ has been imputed or credited to our account, and that's given us this right relationship or this reconciled relationship with God. And then verse 18 says, For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor, the old uh, Oxford English says, or Elizabethan English says, them that are tempted. Succor, the word succor means to help. For he, for it says, for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he was Tempted in the wilderness after his baptism by Satan, you remember the great temptations to avoid the cross. He was tempted in Gethsemane when he uh, when he cried out to God, "Take this cup from me," to avoid the cross and disobey his father. But he withstood those temptations and did the will of his father, even the death of the cross. Uh, Philippians chapter two tells us he was obedient even unto the death of the cross, uh, and. Uh, in verse uh, Hebrews, uh, of course, Hebrews 4.15 tells us in all points he was tempted like as we are, yet again without sin. Now, um, we are, um, we are um, about through with our lesson today. Just a few closing comments. Um, the the things that we want to take away uh, from the lesson today, I, I think uh, most importantly, are from Psalm 34. The passage from Psalm 34 is the fact that God uh, has is is our provider. He is always to be trusted in every circumstance. He is going to provide for our needs. He is going to deliver us in every uh, from every distress. Uh, from times of despair, uh, we simply need to trust him. And as we trust him, we can rejoice and praise him. And we are to praise him uh, in good circumstances and in bad circumstances, realizing that he knows exactly where we are, exactly what we need, and he is providing for those needs. And he's promised to deliver us and will deliver us out of every distress and every despair. And as we truly believe that, we can rejoice in our Savior and we can praise Him uh, continuously. We're to be continuously in an attitude of praise. And the Lord will uh, show us uh, blessings and show us deliverances that we might not have seen before when we're in an attitude of prayer and praise. Uh, praise rather. Um, and then from uh, the, the, the short passage in uh, Hebrews, uh, we are reminded of how 
the Lord Jesus, uh, how he fulfilled his high priestly role, in fact, is now still interceding for us before the throne of God. And we are to recognize that that he knows about every uh, temptation, every distress, every despair, having been made uh, uh, flesh, having come in, we- in the weakness of flesh. There's no way that the almighty God could have suffered and died had he not come in the weakness of flesh. He also experienced our emotions. He experienced, again, our, our, our um, pain. And we are to uh, appreciate what the Lord did for us. And to praise him for that and to praise God Almighty for what he did through the Lord Jesus Christ. Who came not to serve, but to be served rather, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So we trust that you have uh, gotten something out of the lesson today. Uh, we thank God uh, for it and always for his precious word. And we pray that you will be in your church on the, the Lord's day. And uh, we and God bless you and keep you until the next time.